everybody, this is Nelson Everhart. Welcome back to another musical tour of The Spiral. This time we're going to look at a theme from Polaris, which was the 13th or 14th world release, depending upon whether you're counting Grizzleheim uh, and Winter Tusk or not. But for me, this was like the 14th world that I had written for. This was composed in 2015, September, October ish and coming as it did right after uh, the world of chrysalis which had a much more modern score for wizard 101 there were, there were some synths in it there were some horror movie elements to it and this kind of threw the brakes on that and sort of checked the overall style by going relatively old school this world was inspired by a lot of the classic russian composers um, Sorgsky, tchaikovsky rimsky korsakov and a lot of the influence was a very uh, kind of prideful epic nationalist Feel. I took a lot of inspiration from the national anthems of Russia and to a lesser degree uh, France because the story mimics the French Revolution to a degree. So there are a lot of very heavy tonalities and styles. I'd studied some of those composers, um, especially Mussorgsky, uh, Night on Bald Mountain has always been a favorite piece of mine, as well as pictures at an exhibition. And so I probably inserted a little more of the real world into the score of this world than you know, any of the other worlds. I mean, some of them don't have direct comparisons in the real world. There's no country run by bugs. So so I definitely wanted to go with a more traditional instrumentation than a lot of the Wizard 101 score. Stick to flute, clarinet, violin, and viola, and also the choruses of the national anthem, the, the mass choirs. And w what's always interesting about this music is the dichotomy between the, the kind of bold themes of the, the kind of classical Soviet era and the folk themes, which can be very delicate and very, you know, beautiful in, in a very simple way and how those two characters can kind of coexist. So this is the Gulag theme. The notes I was given from the developer, this piece should have a dialogue between the oppressive Russian and the French revolutionaries in the music. A morose piece, dark classical vibe. The Russian oppression should be the overlying factor. Some military percussion peppered in there occasionally. They also wanted a little bit of kind of a clandestine sort of a, you know, secret underground network kind of operating underneath it. So some sort of sneaky themes in there. I did a lot of remixing on this tune. There was a lot of neat parts to it that I wanted to expand on and clarify a little bit. So I had a lot of fun doing it. Right here, you'll see there's a new violin solo sound. I don't normally do this, but this the sound that I used for this takes up a lot of RAM and my system was kind of chugging. So I found I needed to record it as audio. So you'll see the MIDI here, but the audio will be right underneath it. All right, so I'm going to play it now and then we'll get into it.
So in a lot of ways, this is a little more straight ahead than the composition that I'm used to doing for this game. So I did include the harp, which has been in most of Wizard 101's worlds. Which I think gets you right to the kind of heart of the classical feel. That violin right there is by a company called Embertone, and I love their legato instruments. This is the Josh Bell violin uh, solo sound. They take some time to mess with the velocities of all the notes to really get the, the amount of sliding between the notes and the expression that you're looking for, but, but a beautiful, beautiful instrument. Uh, now, right in the beginning with this fanfare part. <laughs> This part was definitely uh, inspired by Shostakovich piece, the, his fifth symphony in D minor. If you go check that out, you can tell right from the top, it's it's the same idea. I kind of use chords where he used an answering, uh, an answering part, but it gets to the, to the same root of the idea here. And then right into the heavy chords. Brass and wire. And I, I love that last chord. It's it's such a classical dramatic device that A flat uh, diminished seven. And I hold on to it for two bars to ring every last drop of drama out of it. You know, and 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 even let the harp bring us down from there. And when we come back in, it's a lot more restrained. using a uh, clarinet for the lead part there. I feel I sometimes neglect some of the woodwinds just because they don't project as much and don't get to the, the sort of epic nature of the music that I'm normally asked to write, but they're so beautiful and they can act as such a primary ingredient to some of that drama that I wanted to, I wanted to include them here and have them take a lot more of a lead part. So here you can see the clarinet works that quieter section, bringing us back down into this theme, which is taken by the flute and the violin. I wanted this part to sound very much like the folk themes that a lot of Russian composers were working with. I think an interesting part in here, I redid some of the background parts to try and make them not step on these melody lines. These melody lines are so uh, delicate and it's important to hear all of the little quiet parts that I, I move some of this uh, right here particularly. I move this accompaniment so that it, it was supporting it more without getting in the way. So really this staccato part in there, do 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 Da, 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 da. That really helped this part in here pop out, especially kind of some of the delicate turns in the violin part. I did the same thing with the strings in here, really to try and uh, get them out of the way. like this section it, it's just it's more delicate than the writing that i normally get to do here down here all of the uh, woodwinds they're playing around while the melody has a very static line so if you notice the flute does uh this part right Ta -da! and then while it's holding on to that note and there's nothing else happening that's when the supporting woodwinds can kind of play around a little bit Ta -da! Da, na, 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 da, 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 na, right and much less motion in the other woodwinds while there's motion in the melody here this gets static again this starts moving again right here the accordion kind of comes in because in this level the uh, french penguins are the oppressed so
This is also demonstrating uh, something that I, I like to think that I do a lot, and that's to pay attention to the length of the notes. Taking that little break in there just really makes a big difference, making this note here shorter. This little lift here just makes the vibe that I was looking for. If that was just, we'll do an experiment here. Let's lengthen this note here and hear what this does to the flow. You know, it's not bad, it's not wrong, but it doesn't it doesn't have that same it's dynamics. For for you to appreciate, you know, notes playing, there needs to be space between them at times. So remember the the developer note said it's not active military battle or anything in here, but it's just a presence. So it's a little more subtle, but here's the snare drum. leading into this next section which which i think is the walrus berg theme that i wrote for a, a previous piece it really does help to start writing at the at the heart of the matters <laughs> We've actually slowed down in a previous space, gotten down to 96 BPM. This is actually an increase in tempo, not much, just three PPM over about eight bars, but it just gives you, it's very subtle, but it just gives you kind of an optimistic view, right? <laughs> these strings up here this is more of my john williams writing the end of the first star wars film in episode four where they're doing the the metal ceremony let's take out all the the melody in there <laughs> You can see uh, that they're not playing the same things, but they're they're kind of meant to work together. They they come together for some of the important hits here. Here's the triplet, uh, and this next section is another section that I wanted to make bigger. The strings playing pizzicato are really the only instrument doing this part. So for the remix here, I actually heard uh, some mallet percussion doing that part as well. So we got a vibes there and marimba's doing a little more of the percussive part. And yeah, there is some slop in there. And I think that uh, makes it sound a little more realistic. There's a lot of room between the strings who are sitting in the front of an orchestra and the mallet percussion that's sitting at the back of an orchestra. I also added some of these uh, bell trees and wood blocks and the triangle was in there before. Uh, and then in there, I've said before about the importance of kind of more idiosyncratic sounds. I actually have a string trill and a woodwind trill here that I think add a lot to this section. sting here and there and I like it being just twice and it's kind of in between the uh, the phrases that the, the melody was doing here getting back to the question of what parts come first to mind here it was definitely this background section uh, and then the melody section such as it is it's kind of like a little little solo break the trumpet and then the clarinet has these little kind of sneaky lines here and <laughs> There's a MIDI clip right here and it says trumpet. So what this was, this was actually an earlier version of 
this theme. When I come up with something that's almost right, but not quite, I might just mute it and move it up to another track just to keep it around in case when I play it again, it's not gonna sound as good and I can get the old one back. There's there's other ways of doing it, but this is just sort of the fast way that I've, I've developed. But for the first time ever, <laughs> <laughs> forget what i said before that was just a, a piece that i should have deleted and didn't so that goes to show you that sometimes it's just experimentation you know get in there and, and hit some keys and see what happens and, and what notes sound good and what notes don't sound good so let's go right in and uh delete that part it will never be seen we won't talk about it ever again i forgot to mention this bassoon is is an addition that i made for the remix. I think it helped it the woodwind parts out a lot. I'm always looking when I'm, I'm setting up for the loop, I'm looking for a way to tie it back into the intro so it doesn't sound so blatant that it's looping there. I don't want it to change character entirely. I want it to sound like if you weren't paying attention to the beginning, this would sound like the continuation of where the, where the track wanted to go. So I think that's gonna about do, oh, what's over here? Uh, last time I did this, I only regretted it a little bit. These are some of the rejected parts from the piece that I, I moved back here. I thought maybe I could use them somewhere, but it doesn't appear that they work their way back in. This one part is actually a part from the, the little resistance theme that was going on in the middle of that. This kind of goes with that. So that was, I, I did like that idea because it was a little too sparse. I needed a little more action in to, to fill it in. A couple chords there that I like the sound of, but I think it was a little too dark and a little too obviously bad guy. I think the the key to keeping that area of the world interesting was that it, it was a place where the the French lived and worked, you know, it, it was their reality. So it wasn't like Darth Vader was constantly breathing down their necks. guys wanted to hear this stuff <laughs> not even sure what that was it was probably me trying to find some ideas find some chords you, you can hear where we eventually wound up yep so there's that clandestine piece uh, with kind of a little well with some slop thrown in for good measure but also kind of some different harmony in there that's was sort of interesting so that would have been a piece that i i pulled back here and then i definitely was like yeah i'm going to use this section and i did wind up using that idea but then i developed it a little bit further <laughs> similar to something that that wind up making it but it's back here in no man's land this is the idea's graveyard it's at the end of you know most of my tracks all right that will wrap it up for sure guys if there's anybody that you think might be interested in something like this please please pass it on to them let them know about the channel uh, and remember i just started the sheet music project i'm about to drop uh, the second piece for that please check my website out www.nelson e-v-e-r-h-a-r-t Dot com that sheet music there and there's also music minus one track where i take out the melody lines and that can be you playing them let me know what you wind up doing with it if you find it useful or helpful please let anybody else that might be interested in something like that know about it and that's all i got for you thanks everybody goodbye <laughs>